be or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> Classmates, Shakespeare lovers, and everyone who confused copyright and censorship, it is I, Nick. Now, if you're confused by the intro or the format of this video, I can explain. This video is a class project to go over the relationship between the barge William Shakespeare and the bane of every South Park writer's existence, censorship. Nobody forced me to do this video. I could have done a PowerPoint presentation with the same amount of effort. Behold my presentation! Okay, I spent my entire time doing a cool transition, but it was still awesome, right? I'm making this video because I thought, well, it'd be fun, and I could post it on my YouTube channel and force everyone in my classroom to watch it for full engagement. Is that scummy? Oh, well, I think... Let's start by explaining what censorship is. Censorship is defined as... Objection! Lame and unoriginal! Sustained. No further dictionary references, please. Right, okay. Uh, uh, okay, it's actually difficult to truly define censorship because it means to suppress something in a media that is considered obscene, which as you can imagine is extremely subjective from person to person. Of course, there's a long list of things people would rather not see when going through their media, but it doesn't mean that censorship can cover some strange things. While one person will look at Winnie the Pooh and see a lovable little guy, the leader of China, Xi Jinping, will see the symbol of dissidence in China and have him censored. Oh bother. While one person will look at jeans and see a pair of pants, North Korea sees a symbol of American imperialism and have them censored. RIP. And while one person will see a perfectly innocent, stupid video using the ending of Oppenheimer as the basis of the joke, Universal Studios will see it as a threat to their media empire and have it censored, first only in Japan, then copyrighted and censored across the entire internet. I will not forget what you've done to me, Universal Studios! But that aside, I think you all have a grasp of what censorship can cover now that being anything and everything as long as the person in charge doesn't like it. But what did censorship look like back in Shakespeare's time? Well, let's take a look back in time and see for ourselves with- oh, it was basically the same thing. Huh. Censorship in England actually goes back to the introduction of the printing press. When the Guild of Stationers, a group of writers and book vendors, were given a royal charter by Queen Mary to become the government's go-to for printed works, they had also become the government's first censors, making sure that nothing they published had anything bad to say about the government. This policy of government censorship continued into Queen Elizabeth's reign. But instead of focusing on censorship in books, she also saw forms of entertainment as a threat as well. They may silence my writing, but they can't silence this! Save the shop. Oh, my apples! She censored theatrical productions through the Master of Revels, a position that controlled all Elizabethan entertainment from auditioning the acting troops and selecting the plays they performed, to approving the scenery and costumes used in each production. All scripts had to be submitted to the Revels office before they performed, where they were checked to ensure that they were both politically and morally safe. They could force the writers to make alterations to the script as well. And I know what you're thinking. With how crass, scandalous, and politically charged all Shakespeare's works are, he must have gotten censored a lot. Well, you'd be wrong. He never really caused many problems for the government. Except for the time he nearly caused a revolution. <laughs> Heavens! Instead of just telling you how that happened, I'm going to use this premise of using a video to show you what happened so I can justify my suffering here. So without further ado, may I present to you Shakespeare nearly causing a revolution. <laughs> 
Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Rats, what should I write next? Come in. Well, what do I owe the honor of having the Earl of Essex in my humble office? Well, how do you do, Mr. Shakes? I was just in the neighborhood and was wondering if you could write me a play about King Richard II. Hmm, I don't know. I've already done Richard III, so it might be confusing for the audience to have another play that happens before the events of that play. Like some kind of previous sequel. A prequel, if you will. Actually, I'm gonna write that down. That might be used for later. Well, in any case, I would really enjoy having this play be made because I like King Richard II just so much. Not because I have recently fallen out of favor with the Queen Elizabeth and by using this play I remind the people that inadequate rulers should be deposed and begin my glorious revolution. What was that? The sound of my coin purse hitting the ground to make you forget what I just said and agree to write the play. Well, alrighty then, you've got yourself a play. Perfect. Oh, and make sure you make Richard II look really pathetic, and make his abdication really dramatic, and hammer home that it was the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Now leave me to my work, I have much to write. Hmm. Ah! How I wonder what you are. I am brilliant! One play later. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Edmund Tilney, my master of revels. Your timing couldn't be more perfect. I just got finished with another sure-to-be classic that I need you to check. There once was a man from Nantucket. Not now, Sir Spear. I've come here today because your most recent play has caused some issues and must be changed. I don't understand. You nor the Queen have ever had problems with my plays before. What is the issue with this one? The Earl of Essex has staged a rebellion against the crown. Though had it failed, many of those involved had come from watching your Richard II play. We believe they were inspired by your work and we must change it now before something like this happens again. Well, I am flattered that you think I can inspire such feelings in people. I hope you know that I am loyal to the crown. But I am also loyal to my art. So even if it causes troubles with the courts of England, I refuse to change anything about my play, for it is the sacred duty of art to challenge the status quo and see that change happens when it becomes necessary. Look, you can either change the abdication scene, or you can end up like this guy. I'll go get my pen. This is the only time that Shakespeare has ever been censored for any of his works. And that didn't even last very long. It got republished during King James I's reign. The only other attempt to censor Shakespeare happened long after Shakespeare's career had ended. And his life. In 1807, a man named Thomas Bowdler published a book titled The Family Shakespeare, which removed the inappropriate material that is common in Shakespeare's plays. Trying to create a family-friendly Shakespeare, purged of all blasphemy and immorality. Some of these changes include... Changing God to heavens, changing Ophelia's death from suicide to an accidental drowning, and changing in the Scottish tragedy, Lady Scottish Tragedy's famous line, Out Dan Spot to Out Crimson Spot. Just to name a few. While his intentions were pure, clearly, the act of editing Shakespeare made Boulder synonymous with the act of censorship. Or boulderize, which means to expurgate, you're on your own for that one, by omitting or modifying parts considered vulgar. Or to modify by abridging, simplifying, or distorting the style or content. Now I doubt he wanted his name to become a word meant for censorship, but hey, Give him credit, he censored Shakespeare. As long as you don't look anywhere besides a conservative library with no internet access, then he did it. He did it. Yeah. Now I know I've been making light of censorship throughout this entire video, and it's mainly because it's laughable how much people have tried to censor something but it's also a reminder of how far people will go to control something as well. Because that's what censorship is. Control. 
be it a world leader deciding what pants you're allowed to wear, or some guy deciding that Shakespeare should be more family friendly. It's not up to us what can or cannot be censored, it's who's ever on top or decides they have the right of way. And that's what makes art so important. A painting can hold the imagery of what's going on in the world at that very moment, even if it's just around the artist. A song could hold the feelings of inspiration that made it, and theater can show an audience everything from so very little. And that's why art and censorship will always be at odds. One is the idea of free thought, while the other is the control of thought. And as Shakespeare once put it, in his play The Tempest, thought is free. And that's actually Shakespeare. Don't worry. I checked. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. That's honestly an accomplishment for people who watch my videos. And thank you so much to my classmates and teacher for bearing through this. If one person laughed, I'll consider that a win. If nobody did, then this is going to be a very sad statement and I'm embarrassed. But I'm keeping it in so I can pad out the runtime to at least 15 minutes. Oh, speaking of assignment requirements, the three questions that my classmates have to answer can be found in the description below, along with the citations to my sources so that nobody can call me academically dishonest. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about censorship and Shakespeare. Now, run the outro!